Hey there, what's up? The Google Street View Profit series continues with this section about agency upsells. When you are on location with a small business owner and creating Google Street View virtual tours, whether the client is really small, a small restaurant, or whether it's a large campus location with a lot of complexity and multiple stories, you want to view your business as not just a 360 or a virtual tour or 3 tour business. You don't even want to just be a media provider one step up. You want to be a solutions provider, okay? The goal of every customer is to win more customers, to win in their local market and to beat their competition and take the existing market that's out there in the ethosphere and attract them to their business, okay? So when you have done a good pain discovery and you learn what's important to them and you apply your skill sets, whether it's Google Street View virtual tours or other media like images or drone photography or other social media type marketing services, when you apply those services to your customer's needs, the next step is to offer them other stuff. The reason why you want to offer your current or previous customers more things that you can do for them is because they're the easiest customer to sell. A customer that you've already built rapport with, you've already sold, you've already had a transaction go through and that customer likes what they got and they're telling their friends and giving you referrals is the easiest customer to sell to. The customer who, who does not know or the prospect who does not know you, you're ice cold, has no, no level of awareness, is the hardest customer to sell to and they have to be educated, they have to, they have to be aware of their problem, they have to be aware of solutions, and they have to be aware of what you have to offer. It's a long way to go. Possible to do it, a skilled salesperson can do it regularly, but understanding that journey is that the easiest customer is someone who's most aware of the problem and the solutions and is considering them, right, in the market, in the market now. So you as an agency, you need to be selling and upselling other services. So what's some things you can do on location that are very practical when you are providing Google Street View, virtual tour services, and other type of services. Well, typically, if you're in the media space, you get compartmentalized into someone who can handle a camera, who can who can handle media, who can make it look beautiful, right? Um, an easy upsell from, from Google Street View is a hosted tour on Cloud Pano. A hosted tour on Cloud Pano is simply a virtual tour they can put on their website or they can put anywhere on social media, et cetera, that has infinite kind of custom options. You can add hotspots, info spots, embed media, capture leads, embed a customer's chat bot, add analytics, et cetera, get real fancy, real fast. You can hire a developer to do custom JavaScript and CSS on the virtual tours themselves and customize the experience. A hosted tour is like a Google Street View tour on steroids. It allows you to do things like capture leads, capture information that are more aligned with the customer's ultimate need. The customer's ultimate desire is not to be on, on Google Street View. The ultimate desire is to capture more leads and make more sales, right? And oftentimes they're gonna give words or color around that need, and it's your job to help show them other ways they can achieve that specific goal, right? So a hosted tour, oftentimes you can charge recurring. So you can charge a hosting and maintenance fee. I've seen folks charge $10 a month or, you know, a couple a month off if you, you know, pay annually. So $110, so, so per location, um, which a lot of people do per location host and maintenance. Or I've seen folks charge $49, $100 a month. I've seen a lot of folks charge $1,200 uh, plus per year to host and maintain the virtual tours on Cloud Pano. Um, and it all depends on the level of customer service you're gonna provide. So if there's a lot of things you have to do throughout the year to help that customer, the price of hosting and maintenance should go up because you have more human capital that's gonna be involved in helping out with the virtual tour or making sure integrations are in place or just making sure it's updated as needed. So you have to talk with the customer and determine those things. Oftentimes, once a customer is happy, they, they aren't really nagging you about certain aspects of the virtual tour or you can add them onto your team in Cloud Panel and have them also make edits as well in the team editor on Cloud Panel. So it's really, really cool that you can just easily add them into your world and of course charge a monthly fee for that because you're gonna be paying monthly fees for the, the, those types of software services anyways. So the, those those things work at scale. For you, the service provider, uh, the more customers you have paying you monthly, the more um, you pay for all your expenses each month, right? Also, 
Think of your business as a solutions provider and think of simple upsells. So you can build a landing page for traffic. A landing page is something you can build on leadstack.ai very easily. A drag and drop email or our website builder and you can capture leads, add pop-ups, exit pops, capture information, exchange a cust or, a, or a leads information for a promise. On the next page, you can fulfill on that promise, whether it's a coupon code, a discount, a special offer. You can create these simple landing pages for a fee. Thousand, two thousand dollars are very common prices. Um, and of course, if you get fancy, you can have you can add a chat bot on lead stack and you can send text message leads right to your customer, right? The customer can literally pay you for leads, pay, pay, pay you per lead as well. Let's say your customer's value is 500 bucks a month for um, you know, a storage space, right? And they have to get on average, you know, five leads to come in before they close a deal. Well, that means that a leads value in that case um, is around $100. If that's the case, then you, you create, you get five leads for them, or say you get four leads for them, they could pay you um, $400 per lead or $400 for those leads. And maybe you could even have it to be where you give them a discount per lead or you have a lead value and then you say, I'm gonna hit this certain lead metric. And if we don't hit that metric per month, I'll discount the services for you know this amount per month based on the number of leads we didn't get, et cetera. Or you can run Google ads for customers where they pay per click and you help set up and they help set up and manage that account for them. Or a retainer, right? You can run Facebook ads for your customers. You can sell them photo services, drone services. You can even outsource a lot of these services to third parties or local third parties to come do them and you just subcontract out. Get really good at subcontracting with great providers, build your Rolodex of really good local providers, and then you can manage the customer, keep the margin, work out a deal, get the contract signed, and then you go to your subcontractors, three or four, and you say, hey, here's my project. Who wants to give me the best price for the best quality output? In that scenario, you control the customer flow and you just outsource the fulfillment. This means you're gonna increase the customer value. It's all about the numbers, baby. You wanna increase your customer value. If you get, if you decide that Google Street View is gonna be your low ticket entry offer, that's okay, that's a great thing because you have a series of other services you're gonna provide them. It's not just VR services or 360 services. You have a variety of things you can offer them based on their needs and the agency type model. So your big promise can't be as a cust as a service provider. I create Google Street View virtual tours. You can you can do that as a one of your services, but your big promise needs to be whatever the niche's need is, or the or the niche category, and their need, and you help meet those things together. I'll give you an example. Let's say hypothetically you are in in the storage space. You say I help storage facilities fill up their occupancy to 98% guaranteed in three months or less, right? Well, if you're a storage facility, that's the first thing you read on the website. You're going to be like, okay, I'm interested because this guy is, well, this person, this, this lady is the, he says she's an expert. Let's see what her case studies look like. Let's see what she's doing. Let's see how, um, how she can help us. Let's, let's watch some of the content, right? Same is true for, say you help, I've saw a marketer who helps market churches and helps them get their marketing in you know in tight and in, in just be more organized and, and he's just an expert on marketing for churches so it's what he does and because he's focused on that niche he can speak their language help them achieve their goals and then talk about the pain and then insert the different services based on what their needs are so if he wants to make a virtual tour for churches great that could help people increase their occupancy and increase their their Ultimately, you know, the, the ecosystem that, that, that is a church. So there's lots of ways to go about it. When you target a niche, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next or uh, upcoming sections, you have to be able to think about your business as an agency. What else can I sell them? How can I sell, sell it to them? How can I learn about it? Sometimes it's best to get paid to learn. What I mean is if you find a subcontractor expert who's really good at something, but they're also really expensive and your margin is very thin, Go through that process one time and you'll learn what they do and how it works. And then if you can sell it better and find more people that you know the language, you know the lingo, you know the world, whether it's web design, Facebook ads, Google ads, landing page, funnel building, um, insert the different marketing type services. And if and the more you learn, you get paid to learn, right? So it's okay to hire an expert and pay a lot more because the person is gonna help you become an expert for next time.
And so you could, there's video services and video shorts and social media management. Gosh, in Leadstack.ai, you can literally post what's called a recurring social post. You can fill up with 30 or 60 or 90 or 120 posts that every month repost in someone's account. And when you have that set up, once you set it up one time, it's just recurrently gonna be doing that. So you can charge a retainer to recurrently post on social media for customers. So it, it gets real fancy real fast, but you have to figure out what your customer's need is, right? So the tools you need are Cloud Piano to upload on Tree View, and you need leadstack.ai to make web pages, websites, manage social media, and of course, send leads to your customers. It's all about sending more leads to your customers. That's what matters the most. Can we capture them on the chat bot? Can we capture them on the lead form? Can we capture them on a pop-up? Can we send make a, make a funnel for them? All the, can we make automations that connect the salesperson and the lead? Of course we can. So all those things matter, and that's how you get to the next level and start ch charging two, three, four, five thousand dollars per month, and that's how you can do that. I hope this is helpful for you. Think about your business as an agency model. What else can I sell to them? How can I sell it to them? And of course, focus, focus, focus on the customer's pain, and you will have success. See you in the next section.